Recently, friends and I had the perfect day in Venice and nearby islands. We saw the world famous Murano glass being made and the adorable colorful villages of Burano Island. In Venice, we went to the legendary Harry's Bar, watched the sunset from the rooftop of the iconic Venice Hilton, and of course, visited Piazza San Marco. To see it all, keep watching this video. Once we arrived at the Venezia Santa Lucia train station, the first thing was to get tickets to the Vaporetto, or water taxi, to Murano Island by waiting in this line just across from the train station and to the right. After buying the tickets, we got on the waiting platform for the 4.2 Vaporetto to Murano. And we're off. So what's so special about this tiny island just 1.5 kilometers from Venice? Murano Island is famous for Murano glass, renowned all over the world. It's a unique form of traditional glass making, which is colorful and artistic. And we've arrived. Murano is tiny. It's just seven small islands connected by bridges, only one square kilometer in total size. So you can walk the whole island in a short time. We decided to stop in this showroom, Schiavon, which is one of the first shops on your left along the canal after you get off the Vaporetto. Just look at all these amazing and unique works of art. We met a nice man called Andrea inside, who explained how everything is made. Just check out these chandeliers, which take several months to perfect. We listened attentively and appreciated this personalized attention, plus the opportunity to learn more about Murano glass. And then, Andrea brought us to their very own workshop, right in the back of the shop. We've all been looking forward to seeing how the glass is made. Andrea explained that the temperature of the furnace is 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, the minimum temperature needed to shape the glass. And you can feel the heat from where we're standing. This is the raw form of silica sand mixed with potassium carbonate that is used to make the glass. To get different colors, they add different minerals. Glass made in Venice has a long history. It was originally used for lighting in Roman bathhouses. The earliest known glass furnace that was found on a Venetian island dated back to the 8th century. In 1291 though, the Venetian government forbid glass making in Venice because it was dangerous to have huge furnaces in the wooden Venetian buildings. That was when glass making was moved to Murano and Murano rose to international fame. There was also a theory that the Venetian government had a plan to isolate artisans in a place where they couldn't share secrets of the glassmaking trade with the outside world. In 1295, the Venetian government passed a law which forbid the glassmakers from leaving. In return for this isolation, glassmaking artisans were given special privileges. They held a special higher social status and their daughters could marry into rich noble Venetian families. This way, the government kept the trade sealed within Venice glassmaking stayed within the family. Now it's time to get back on the Vaporetto to go to Burano Island. That's Burano with B. When I first heard these names, I thought they were like sister islands, maybe right next to each other. But actually, Burano Island is not near Murano Island at all. And we had to ride the water taxi for around 45 minutes to get to Burano. Well, we didn't mind at all because what we found on Burano was well worth the time to get there. We've arrived on this adorable island with a population of only 3,000. Burano is famous for brightly colored houses and lace fabric. You can see here as we walk into the main square that there are so many shops with beautiful clothing and tablecloths for sale. Burano lace played an important role in the economic prosperity of Burano Island. Lace making came to Burano during the 16th century when Venice was under the rule of Cyprus and in fact originated from a place called Lefkada in Greece. At one point, Leonardo da Vinci visited Lefkada and brought back some lace to Italy, after which Burano women took up the trade. Real lace is handmade, but many people do try to make copied versions. So if you visit Burano, make sure you talk to experts to find authentic producers of lace. The other motif of Burano is these brightly colored houses which are painted in rainbow colors. But why and how did they decide to paint them these vivid colors? 
Well, Burano has always been home to many fishermen, and fog is common in the Venetian islands. So legend has it that the houses were painted this way so the fishermen could find their way back home through the fog. Fishing and lace making were the traditional main professions here, but nowadays the island's main economic activities are tourism, restaurants, and retail. There were so many restaurants to choose from, most with seafood and vegetarian options too. Check out TripAdvisor for recommendations on the best restaurants. And be sure to wear comfortable clothes and walking shoes. There's a lot of walking, so you'll need them. We stopped here to take a photo of these little fishermen in the making before turning around and making our way back to the Vaporetto. It was definitely worth the visit to Murano and Burano. But now it's time to get back to Venice. Soon we transition from Burano back to Venice and on to Piazza San Marco. This is Palazzo Ducale, former home of the Dolce or Venetian leader and seat of the government. Piazza San Marco is one of the most famous places in Venice and a visit to Venice wouldn't be complete without at least a stop there. The buildings surrounding the square are called Procuratie and were the offices and homes of government officials. Then there's the Campanile or Bell Tower and the stunning Basilica. In the past, this square was used for public meetings. Next, it's on to the iconic Harry's Bar, meeting place of celebrities, kings and queens, declared a national landmark by the Italian government. These are Bellinis made of champagne and peach puree. Each little glass cost 22 euros. Then it was time for our last boat ride of the day as we made our way to the legendary Hilton Hotel. On the way there, I couldn't help but notice this random pirate ship. But we are eager to get to the Hilton before the sun sets. Can we make it? We've made it. We race in and straight up to the rooftop terrace just in time to catch the sunset over Venice. Of course, we also had to check out the area of the rooftop pool and bar, just exquisite. This deck provides panoramic Venice views and the bar here is one of seven restaurants and bars in the Hilton. There is also a 600 square meter spa and gym. It's the largest convention center in Venice with a capacity for up to 1,000 people. Just be sure to make a reservation if you want to visit the rooftop bar. We didn't make a reservation, but we somehow talked our way inside. But I don't know if we will be so lucky next time. Before it was a hotel, this was one of the largest flour mills in Europe. It was started by Giovanni Stucchi in the late 1800s and was a massive complex of 13 different buildings built with a style of Gothic Revival architecture. At its height, there were 1,500 employees and the mill ran around the clock. Stuckey became a very rich man, but unfortunately he was killed by an angry worker. The mill's business went downhill after that and was affected by war as well as other disasters. It closed down in 1955 and stayed empty for many years until 1994 when it was purchased and renovations started. The Hilton Molino Stucky Venice, as it is known today, opened its doors in 2007. It's now getting late and it's time to make our way back to Vicenza. I hope you enjoyed this video and will take these suggestions for one of your future trips to Venice. It was surely one of the most satisfying trips I've ever had in this wonderful city. Everything worked out beautifully, and we just went very smoothly from place to place. So this is my video of five things to do in Venice, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please click subscribe and come back for future videos about wonderful Italy. Ciao for now!